Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and we're working through all the video tutorials on the Husqvarna Viking Amber S100 serger. Now in this last video, we are going through decorative threads, some of the decorative stitches you can do with this machine, how to adjust for thicker decorative threads. We're gonna talk about rolled hem, flat lock, and a two thread rolled hem as well. We're gonna also touch on optional accessory feet. This serger can be outfitted to do so much more. So there's a handful of accessory feet that you can find at your local Husqvarna Viking store and just let them know which model you have and they'll get you the correct serger feet. And just a reminder, we have some Craftsy serger classes that we recommend, those links are in the description below, that have projects. And one of the projects I've actually done from one of those classes is this one, which is from Angela Wolf's Quick and Easy Serger Projects. It's using a rolled hem to turn the look of this fabric into having pin tucks. So all I did was I folded this fabric on marked lines, did a rolled hem, flattened it out, and then cut the piece of fabric I wanted. So in this case, a pillow, but you could easily embellish for other items, like create your own fabric and then cut your pieces out of it. So this is kind of, like I said, a look of of pin tucks. You can kind of see the, the dimension there. I love it. Um, I am a fan and I did use like an embroidery thread in the upper looper for the rolled hem and I just matched it to the Silk Dupiani purple that I had. I love the shimmery colors with that. I'm also going to show you how to do a decorative uh, edge, a wide decorative edge with some of uh, my favorite Razzle Dazzle thread from Ricky Timms. Uh, I always love what Superior Threads puts on the end here. It says for bobbin work, couching, and the serger. Now when we get to decorative threads, we're going to be tying these on and pulling them through. That is a technique that we have done in some of our previous videos. So just make sure that you've watched them all and probably go back and watch them again. Again, if you don't know where those are found, we do have links below. So you can watch the entire series on how to use this serger. And if you go through all the videos, do everything I do, I guarantee that this serger and you will be best friends. Now, if you haven't purchased this machine yet, this is a great video to just realize how creative a serger can be. Like if you don't have a serger, learn with me what you can do with it. And if some of the lingo isn't um, exactly what you're familiar with, by the time you get a serger and get started, you'll be all all caught up. The other thing is, is that in the manual or user's guide, and if you don't have one or you can't find yours, remember there's one online. So you don't even have to print it off, you can even pull it up on screen. But towards the middle back area, there are all the stitches that we are doing, including all the settings you need. So like which needle to use if you're using or adjusting the tension. This will get you a nice ballpark of what you should have, like your stitch length set up, your cutting width, if your uh, tensions are to be tighter or looser, or what about if you're doing a two thread, don't forget that two thread converter that's added on. Um, the stitch finger, A, B, or sometimes none. So we'll go over some of those settings as we get started. So one of my favorite things to do with this serger is a rolled hem. My three stitches I use all the time, it's a four thread overlock, a three thread narrow overlock edge, and a three thread rolled hem. Now I do love a two thread rolled hem too, but a lot of times I just take out a needle and do a rolled hem. And this is one project that everybody loves when I show it to them. It's just a piece of fabric strips that have been gathered and stitched to this pillow, but on this end, it's all the rolled hem. And it was just easy to do, so find some fun, um, fun fashion fabrics if you want to do something like this. Start on a round base and just spiral your way in. And it, it is just kind of a fun way to kind of make your own. So rolled hem it is. And you can use regular thread with a rolled hem. You can use embroidery thread. Just because it says embroidery thread doesn't mean you have to use embroidery thread. So I've got three things that I'm always going to keep near. My tweezers, my small screwdriver, and my needle threader, which will also catch the needle when I take it out. Now this is an optional accessory, but it is something that I do recommend. And again, we have links below if you haven't found one of those yet. So let's do a three thread 
thread rolled hip. So easiest thing to do is just cut the left needle thread down at the needle. And as you'll see, always take off the spool that you are not using. You're gonna always see me remove that, trust me. You don't want that little tail to find its way back in. And you must remove the needle for this stitch to work. So you can't be lazy and just leave it in but not thread it. So I'm gonna slide that little guy up and I'm loosening that screw at the top letting it drop down, see how easy it is just to kind of catch it so it doesn't fall into the serger. And then don't forget to tighten up that screw at the top. Now it's gonna tighten up a lot further than it was when you took it out, but it is all set. The other thing that you do is you come over to the stitch length and you actually shorten it. So there is a, a section right here that says R for rolled hem. So just by going in and shortening your stitch length, we will do decorative threads with a rolled hem. So I'll show you how you adjust tension in a second when we actually add those on. But there's one last thing you must do to get a rolled hem. There is a stitch finger that we're gonna remove to do the rolled hem. Now, when you open this door, one of the things you do notice right here is there is a second stitch finger. Now, I haven't used this yet, but this is considered the B, B as in boy, stitch finger. The one we're gonna take out is considered the A stitch finger but for a three thread rolled hem, your book will say none. So we actually remove it, but do keep in mind that there are two of them and they have a different size. So one A, one B, and then when we don't need it, um, then we're leaving it empty. So you're pushing down on this knob here, and then as you open it, the stitch finger is this little guy here. Now, the first time you pull it out, I want you to look right in here where it is being removed from, because it's gonna look a little awkward. You just take it your fingers and then pull straight out. But as you pull it straight out for the first time, I want you to come out here and then push it right back in. I want you to see where it actually came out of its home. So when you go to put it back in, it's kind of got like two little sections like right here that are black and you're slipping the end. It kind of looks like a little sword when you hold it here. When you are putting it back in, you're like putting it back in the little lips. So it is very easy to do, but once it's pushed in, it's in and then you can just close it up. But when you need to remove it, find a good home for this. Uh, I don't think it, there's really a place for that. I guess we could kind of put it back in there. Maybe there is. I haven't ever done that before, but I'm gonna just stick mine right there, push this all away till it clicks, and we are ready to try a rolled hem. So all we've done is shorten the stitch length, remove the needle, and oh, one last thing, you need to tighten, higher number, to a seven, six or seven, for the lower looper. The first time you do a rolled hem, it is absolutely exciting because all of a sudden you realize you have a very professional looking edge. You have whatever color is in your upper looper, which remember our upper looper is red, so I have pink in my uh, machine, is what you're gonna see all the way over to the back side. So when we tighten that lower looper, what it did was it pulled it all the way around, hence the name of a rolled hem. So you really only need one decorative thread when you are doing a rolled hem. You might match what's in your needle to something close to the fabric or the color of thread you're using. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, it just kind of blends in. And whatever's in your lower looper may or may not actually be seen because it's so tucked in on the backside that it just kind of hides. And that's why doing a two thread rolled hem is nice because you don't have that little extra thread back here that's not doing anything, nobody ever sees it. But if you didn't have three closest colors, the one that doesn't belong or isn't as close as the others is gonna go in the lower looper because it's on the back side way back here. So really that's all you need to do is make sure you tighten up that lower looper tension. Of course, don't forget to put it back when you're done. And sometimes when doing a roll hem, I'll leave myself or recommend to students, leave the, yourself a sticky note on that stitch finger that you pulled out. Because if you don't put it back in and you go back to four thread, it's not gonna look good at all. You'll, you'll see that everything kind of falls and rolls. And it's a very uh, ugly, petite looking four thread. It's like, where did the whole rest of it go? It's because the stitch finger isn't in there to support those stitches because we've removed it and that's what's made it roll over. So before we tie on and pull through a decorative thread, I gave you a hint. You only really need one of them for a rolled hem. This is one of my favorites, like a wooly nylon. There's a, a variety of brands out there that have something that's kind of stretchy and then it fluffs up. 
and it helps fill in the edges of where the stitch length doesn't come all the way close together to give you a solid look. So if a solid soft look is what you're after, reach for something like a woolly nylon. There's, like I said, a couple different brands out there. I'm gonna tie it on, um, but it is a thicker thread. So one thing you wanna be aware of is the tension you put it in. For today, this will be our upper looper. You need to loosen it. Give this area a little breathing room so that the thicker thread is going to naturally come through it. As we do that, we might need to tighten up the other one to get it to fully roll over. But I'll go ahead and start with just that breathing room. I'm kind of, I'm bringing it down to two, almost one, and I'll leave the lower looper at seven. Now we do talk about how to tie threads on in one of our other videos where we talk about threading. Clip at the spool in the back part. And let's see here, because this is, Oh, I guess that does kind of fit in there. Test your spools if it would fit or not. So I'm gonna leave that little cone holder on for right now, and I'll just set my other spool on top of it. If you ever lose it, it might be because uh, it's stuck in one of the spools that you took off earlier. But I'm gonna just bring these threads forward. I'm putting both the tails together and really just tying an overhand knot. It will look like you're tying a balloon knot. That's how I call it. Then the next thing to do, let's bring the needle all the way to its highest position, get a hold of the chain. As you pull, go ahead and snip the threads here so you can separate the threads from the chain and then just get a hold of the one with the knot and then the knot will go all the way through your looper. So we're already pulled through and ready to stitch. Again, you might like the stitch like not to be so dense as you start off just so it doesn't pile up, uh, but I'm gonna make it just start a little bit less, maybe one, one and a half. Uh, sometimes when you get it too close together, it kind of looks like um, it could even not get started. So I like to make it a little longer and then adjust it as I go once I get it in the machine and it's to my liking. So here's the difference between using regular thread and then using a thicker thread. You can really get it to be a nice solid edge. This is perfect for napkins. It's, it's a very soft one if you're putting it up against your face and, and wiping it. Let's peek at the back side. Again, it's pulled all the way to the back side, so it's nice and um, all the way pulled. So whatever I <laughs> decided to start with with that looser tension actually nailed it the first time. But if it hadn't pulled all the way over, I could start by tightening the lower looper a little bit more and then loosening the decorative thread a little bit more. So you can kind of do a little of each. Since we're all set up for a rolled hem, how easy it is to go from a three thread rolled hem to a two thread rolled hem. Now a two thread, remember we do use only the lower looper. So we're gonna do this without the decorative thread. So that is gonna come off. We're gonna use the right needle and the lower looper. And I do need to come in and get a hold of my two thread converter. That's stored in the small little area here. It's the one with the little white uh, button to hold on to. And then let's go ahead and lift up the foot, pull this all the way out and get the other thread out of the way. The two thread converter is placed near the upper looper, it just slides into this little opening and then it's going to tuck itself behind the upper looper so it kind of fills in the hole. Now we have described what a two thread overlock is all about in more detail in the video where we talk about two thread, three thread, and four thread overlock stitches. But that is kind of what we're doing. You just put it in when you do two thread and then the machine thinks there's thread in the upper looper when it actually does not. So let's just take a quick peek at the settings for a two thread rolled edge. We have the right needle, the cutting width, the stitch length at two, so let's do that. Uh, we have two threads in, no stitch finger, the two thread converter is attached. The right needle we're going to set to five, just a little tighter, and then the lower looper we're going to leave at four. So that is super easy to set up. And let's go ahead and do one more pass to see what this is all about. Now, if you did want to do decorative thread in the two thread rolled hem, you would have just needed to move the decorative thread to the lower looper. And then again, just leave that tension a little less so it can accommodate the thicker part of the thread. 
I really think people need to use a two thread rolled hem more often. Number one, less thread in use, and it just beautifully rolls the edge of the fabric. And it's great for those lighter weight fabrics. So you have something very drapey, super sheer, or a scarf, this is gonna be the perfect stitch for you to use and not add extra weight unnecessarily. It is beautiful. Next up, I wanna show you what a flat lock looks like, how to set it up, and where in the world did they have the idea of a flat lock stitch in the first place. So here is what it's gonna look like. When we stitch, we're able to stitch two pieces together and then flatten it out. So it kind of looks like you're sewing it together, but you're not, you're doing it on the serger. And there's two sides to a flat lock. So for example, on this side of my pillow, I have utilized flat lock where the decorative thread is in the upper looper, which is how we're gonna set up this machine next. And you can do fun, thick decorative threads. You can do variegated quilting thread, you really can have all the fun you want. But if you put the fabrics together in the opposite way and then open them up like a hinge, you will get a different look. See right here? This is the needle thread. So depending on if you put right sides together or wrong sides together, when you do a flat lock, you will get two different ways of looks. And sometimes people do it like on the bottom of a piece of fabric, they might flat lock a piece of lace. So that could be like a hem. You could flat lock a piece of ribbing. There's lots of places where you can just have it so it opens up flat. Now to make something open up flat, you're gonna see we're gonna adjust the needle tension to zero and that's what's gonna make it open. So if you've ever had awful tension because you didn't put uh, the thread in the tension disc all the way like we've talked about, if you don't get it all the way flossed in, you have zero tension because you have no tension and somebody's like look it's a decorative stitch and that's probably how we got a flat lock so that is one place I've used it I've also used it now this will be a little hard to see well you can see a little bit here where on the edge this is the needle thread showing but there is ribbon that I have woven through the flat lock and I love this pillow because that's what I used around the edge to give it kind of that fun tuxedo-like looking border. One of my favorite ones, I did tone on tone with the embroidery and then finished it with the flat lock border. Okay, so how are we setting this up? First off, I've actually already moved the needle from the right position to the left position and got rid of the blue thread and put the yellow thread on. I also went ahead and put the woolly nylon back in the upper looper. So let's take a look at our settings here for a three thread flat lock stitch wide. So we are in the left needle, the cutting width is five. Stitch length, let's move to three. We're using all three threads, but look, this is where the stitch finger is the B finger. Now, since we were last doing the rolled hem, I have no finger at all, and the B finger is the one that's currently in your area down here. So we're gonna open it up, hold it like a sword, look for those little lips and slide it in. Again, keep those separated so you know which one is the A and which one is the B. The B has a narrower finger and the A has a much wider, thicker finger. So think of that for your four thread overlock, that is the wider version. So just kind of note that if you start switching around which one you are actually using at a current time. So next I'm noticing, and I don't know if this is a typo, but I always do my three thread flat lock stitch wide with the left needle, and it seems to have this switched. But I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the tension to zero and pretend that it says that my left needle should be in for the wide, which it should. My tension for the decorative, or for my upper looper should be three and a half. But remember we put decorative thread in it, so let's give it a little breathing room. I'm gonna turn it to two. Might have to adjust it just a little bit. And then look at this. The lower looper tension goes all the way up to nine. All right, so we go from zero to nine and somewhere in between for the rest of it. So let's go ahead and take a few stitches, see what this looks like, and I'll explain how this all works. So since
since I was using some woolly nylon, I did need to adjust things just a little bit. First off, I realized that my lower loop retention was way too tight and it was just not catching everything. So I loosened that up a little bit. I also, instead of it being at zero, I did give it a little bit of tension. Uh, zero was just too loose. So I went ahead and brought it back to about two. So here's how a flat lock works. You can see I have pink, woolly nylon, so that's our top. And yes, there is gonna be some loops because I don't want this all the way filled out to the edge because when I open this up, so here's how it's gonna look. When you fold it all the way out and flatten it, and it's actually very satisfying to do this part, you kind of give it a little pull and it goes all the way flat. This is that kind of that hinge, but everything needs to be kind of loose enough to do that. And since this fabric is a little bit thicker, by having more of it cut off means there's less bulk right here when I'm done. All right, so this is the decorative part. So if I do want a decorative thread to show in the middle of my fabric, I would be placing my fabrics wrong sides together, stitching them, and then opening them back out. Now, let's look at the other sides. This side is almost as fun. So because I have yellow in my needle, that's the stitch you get on the other side. So if this was gonna be your primary side, you would then be stitching with your right sides together and then open it up and then this would be the side. So it's kind of a two for one stitch. When you play around, you can use decorative threads in a flat lock. You could, we could shorten the stitch length now and bring this closer together. So now it's more solid, so it could actually look very, very fun and you can do a lot with a flat lock. So if you ever need to just add something on, you're at your serger, set those tensions to practically zero, <laughs> not all the way, depends on your threads you're using, but you can definitely get a fabulous look. So let's just talk about what I've done on this particular strips that I wove together. So this is that razzle dazzle thread. We have the needle in the left position because it is a, we want the widest look. So we wanted a very bold look, but I didn't put this thread in both the loopers because nobody's gonna ever see the looper that's on the underneath side. So I did need to balance it out. You know what this is? This is just a wide three thread. So outside needle, left needle, upper looper, give it a little loosen, give it some breathing room, so drop that tension down just a little bit, and then balance it out with the tension maybe a little tighter on the uh, lower looper. And just get those edges to kiss right there so they are just the perfect edge. And then again, just one decorative thread. That's one thing you're gonna find with decorative threads. You don't need, well, you definitely don't need four. You barely need one in a couple colors. So find some fun colors that you wanna play with. Even those of you with machine quilting expertise, you might have some decorative threads, variegated threads that you use sometimes that are a little heavier. Um, try those in your serger, put them in through the loopers for decorative edges and you can have a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, I highly recommend that you check out some of those Craftsy classes because they're gonna have projects. Now that you know how to use your serger or if this is just barely wet into your whistle to realize I wanna do more with my serger so it just doesn't sit in the corner and collect dust and only get used when I need to do some edges. You have so much potential with this machine but it takes additional teachers to teach you lots of creative uses for the serger, so find those links below. Also, for those accessory feet, you can do gathering, you can do piping, there's all sorts of fun things you can do with additional accessory feet. So we're gonna put links below and we'll put some links right up here where you can click over and watch me demonstrate a handful of serger feet. You just need to get them so they are for this particular model, your local Husqvarna Viking store can help you with that. So I hope you've checked out all the videos in this serger tutorial and if you have any questions along the way leave those in the comments below let us know what you think about learning how to use your serger from start to finish check out all our videos at sewingmastery.com